In this video, we talk about uh, pressure and flow rate in microchannels, and uh, this will be quite important. So, bear with me and uh, and, uh, and 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 memorize uh, what you see here, because if you ever work with microfluidics, then then you are probably going to need this. And there's also an exercise uh, that that you can do in relation to this after the video. So. We talk about the Poisson equation, not poison, as some people pronounce it, Poisson. And uh, application to channels with different cross-sections, and then uh, the relation to, to flow control in microfluidics. So first of all, the Poisson equation, if you have a pipe or a microchannel for us, and again, you have inlet pressure outlet pressure characteristic length. This is the boundary of uh, your cross-section denoted by gamma. Uh, and this is your uh, flow direction. And yeah, often in literature you find uh, the pipe called duct or tube. That's totally valid, but for us, this is a microchannel. Uh, so, the flow velocity, often denoted by V, here denoted by W, don't let that confuse you. Uh, and uh, yeah, this is the Nobla operator. Uh, you will see this in, a, in another lecture if you have not uh, encountered it yet. But um, so this is a differential form, but uh, don't let that confuse anyone. That is just to, uh, to, to mean that this is a dynamic system. So there is something changing here. Change in pressure, change in, uh, in flow direction, and the change in flow velocity is expressed as such. So pressure, viscosity, flow direction, and velocity are related as such. Assuming constant velocity in longitudinal direction and a fully developed laminar flow. What does that mean? That means the parabolic flow profile that uh, you have already seen, where flow velocity is the highest in the midsection and lowest uh, close to the vol. Actually, lowest means zero. So uh, on the boundary, uh, which is denoted gamma here, uh, flow velocity is zero. What this thing gives us is a way to calculate from the pressure drop the flow velocity, the average flow velocity. And the hypothesis was that uh, an analytical solution exists for the mean velocity, in, uh, in this case in the circular microchannel. You can find uh, my original source down here if uh, you would like to gain more information. But this one and the next one is the most important for you. So circular and rectangular microchannels, that's the most important for you. And uh, yeah, this is a laminar flow that has to be stated. So here we have our uh, tube with circular cross section. If you measure the pressure before and after this tube, then you can do your calculation. And uh, what you also need for this are uh, three parameters. So semi-axes B and C, major and minor uh, semi-axis, and uh, of course the, the pressure drop where the inlet pressure must be at least equal to the outlet pressure but uh, should be typically higher. So this is valid for situations where you have pumping. And uh, L is, remember, the channel length. And epsilon is the aspect ratio, which is this fraction of uh, the two uh, semi-axes. And uh, a reminder about the other uh, quantities is down here. So cross-section you can calculate as such. And perimeter is such. Rectangular microchannels, this is typically what you will work with. Yeah, 
this uh, circular cross-section calculation is for tubing. Uh, so this one is for your uh, regular microchannels. And uh, again, the hypothesis is the same. Obviously, this has been proven experimentally. That's why I'm telling you all this. So it's not just a hypothesis. It's a proven theory. Uh, microfluidic chip, pressure before, pressure after the chip. And uh, you need to know, again, these two semi-axes. So you need to know the size of your channel. But if you design your chip, then you will, of course, know it. Um, area and perimeter for rectangles. Expression is like this. So again, mean velocity expressed uh, by knowing the, the pressure drop. The rest of the parameters in the, the previous case, in this case also, you can get from the geometry. And also you need to know the uh, liquid viscosity. So once again, semi-axis B and C. Uh, B is the major axis, C is the minor axis, inlet pressure, outlet pressure, channel length, and the aspect ratio. But uh, what you really need to know here are semi-axis uh, length, uh, the um, uh, viscosity, dynamic viscosity, and then uh, the pressure drop, and then you can calculate. Uh, and about flow control. So it's one thing to know the flow rate, which is just uh, flow velocity multiplied by channel cross-section. Unit is uh, cubic meters per second. Uh, we will talk about liquid pumps in another lecture, in uh, the lecture about actuators. They are not perfect flow rate generators. So if you remember, microfluidic flows are pressure driven, most commonly. So this uh, parabolic flow profile that you get, that's uh, a pressure driven flow. P1, P2, and P1 is typically higher than P2, especially if you use pumps. And um, Problem is back pressure that uh, that either you have pressure pushing back or uh, the liquid itself can um, create some back pressure when you introduce it to the microfluidic chip. You need to squeeze out the air, and that creates a back pressure. Or as the tubing expands and contracts, there can be many effects uh, causing a back pressure that lowers the flow rate as this equation uh, or as this uh, expression tells us. So Q max is the, is the theoretical maximum flow rate, maximum pressure achievable and the back pressure. And uh, Q max is uh, what you can get if nothing is attached uh, to the pump and likewise uh, uh, P max is the maximum back pressure that uh, the pump can take. This uh, should be available to you from specifications of, uh, of your product. So it's good to be aware of this. And uh, usually to, to counter the effects of uh, back pressure, we use check valves that uh, allow only unidirectional flow. And uh, that was it for this video. And uh, you can solve the exercise uh, in, in Moodle.